All right, let's dive right into our first topic, the physics of light and its correlation with color perception. Now, color isn't an inherent property of objects. Surprised. Well, it's true. Color is actually a result of how our eyes interpret different wavelengths of light. You see, light is composed of electromagnetic waves that vary in length. These varying lengths are what we perceive as different colors. When light hits an object, some wavelengths are absorbed while others are reflected. The wavelengths that are reflected are what our eyes see as the object's color. For example, when you see a red apple, it's because the apple is absorbing all light wavelengths except for red, which it's reflecting back to your eyes. <laughs> well, what? It's a bit like the apple saying, no things. I don't want these colors. You can have the red one back. Now, the visible spectrum, that's the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that our eyes can see, ranges from violet, which has the shortest wavelength, to red, which has the longest. And all the other colors we see, they're just different wavelengths within the spectrum. So there you have it, a crash course on the physics of light and color perception. The world around us is a colorful smorgasbord of light waves, and our eyes are the perfect tools to interpret them. It's a beautiful dance between science and nature, don't you think? It's fascinating, really. Now, let's move on to the next topic. Moving right along, our next stop is the biology of the human eye and its role in color detection. The human eye, believe it or not, is a pretty sophisticated piece of kit. It's like our own personal high-tech camera, capable of detecting millions of colors. But how does it do that? The magic happens in the retina, which is the layer at the back of the eye that receives light. The retina is filled with millions of tiny light-sensitive cells called rods and cones. Rods are great at helping us see in low-light situations, but they don't do color. That's where the cones come in. The cones are responsible for color vision, and they come in three types, red, green, and blue. Each type of cone is sensitive to a particular range of light wavelengths. Red cones respond most to light that we perceive as red, green cones to green light, and blue cones to blue light. The colors we see are a result of our brain interpreting the signals from these three types of cones. So when you're gazing at a beautiful sunset and taking in all those shades of orange, pink, and purple, that's your cones working over time and your brain piecing together the signals they're sending. It's almost like watching a live painting being created right before. But remember, our ability to see color doesn't stop at the eye. The brain has a big role to play too. And that's what we'll be diving into next. Stay tuned. All right, now that we've touched on the physics of light and the biology of our eyes, let's delve into the real command center, the human brain, and how it processes color information. The brain is like the director of this whole color perception show. Once the cones in our eyes have detected light, they send signals to the brain. Here's where things get really interesting. These signals go to a part of the brain called the visual cortex. It's here that the signals from the cones are processed and interpreting. The visual cortex, in a way, is like a master artist, taking a raw data and turning it into a vivid, colorful experience. You see, our perception of color isn't just about the physical properties of light or the biology of our eyes. It's also about how our brain interprets these signals. For instance, have you ever noticed how colors can look different depending on the lighting or the colors around them? That's your brain doing some on-the-spot adjustments to make sense of what it's seeing. And here's another fun fact. Our brains can even fill in colors when they're not actually there 
Ever seen those optical illusions where a gray square looks green or red, depending on the surrounding colors? That's known as color constancy, and it's all thanks to our brain's amazing processing capabilities. Ah, isn't that something? The brain truly is a marvel, and its role in color perception just goes to show how complex and fascinating our natural world really is. But as we'll see in our next topic, not all brains process color in the same way. Stay tuned for a deep dive into color blindness and other anomalies in color perception. Next on our journey of color perception, let's delve into the concept of color blindness and other anomalies in color perception. Now, we've talked about how our eyes and brain work together to interpret the colors we see. But what happens when this process doesn't work as it typically should? Color blindness or color vision deficiency is a condition where a person's eyes are unable to see colors in a normal way. This usually happens when the color detecting cells in the eyes, the cones are absent or don't work properly. There are different types of color blindness. Some people cannot see red and green colors, while others cannot see blue and yellow colors. And in rare cases, some people see no color at all a condition known as achromatopsia. Color blindness is usually genetic, meaning it's passed down from the parents. And interestingly, it's much more common in men than in women. But color blindness isn't the only anomaly when it comes to color perception. There's also a phenomenon called tetrachromacy. Tetrachromats have a fourth type of cone in their eyes, which allows them to see a wider range of colors Imagine being able to see colors that most people can't even dream of. So, as you can see, color perception isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. It can vary greatly from one person to another, and these variations can provide us with fascinating insights into the inner workings of our eyes and brain. Now, let's switch gears a bit and explore how colors can influence our emotions and behavior. All right. We've arrived at our final destination, the psychological and emotional impact of different colors on human behavior. Now, this is where our journey takes a bit of a turn from the scientific to the subjective. You see, colors can have a profound impact on our mood and emotions. Have you ever walked into a room, painted a certain color, and instantly felt a certain way, maybe calmer, for happier or more focused. That's color psychology at work. Different colors can evoke different feelings. For instance, blue is often associated with feelings of calm and tranquility. That's why you'll often see it used in bedrooms and offices. Red, on the other hand, is a bold and energetic color. It's why it's often used to grab attention, like for stop signs or clearance sales. Then there's yellow, often associated with happiness and positivity. It's why we associate it with the sun and summer. <laughs> well, let's not forget green, the color of nature, often used in spaces where we want to create a sense of balance and relaxation. But remember, these associations are universal. Different cultures may have different interpretations of colors. For instance, in some cultures, white is associated with purity and innocence, while in others, it's associated with mourning. So colors aren't just wavelengths of light being interpreted by our eyes and brain. There are also powerful communication tools that can influence how we feel and behave. Fascinating, isn't it? <sighs> well, that's our journey through color perception. I hope you found it as enlightening and intriguing as I did. <laughs>